open our Bibles to the book of Hebrews. You know, for the last couple of weeks, I've been looking at a particular subject, which I, I'm very familiar with, but I just haven't looked at it, you know, uh, in depth as I've been doing. And what I want to talk about tonight, just for a while, is how you can overcome every sin. How you can overcome every sin. I'm going to say it again, how you can overcome every sin. I know in the present day uh, church, uh, this probably is not something that a lot of people would consider important because a lot of the teaching today, uh, it, it kind of takes sin and sweeps it under the table. It kind of makes like, it makes it sound like sin was dealt with when Jesus went to the cross. Uh, and what Jesus did on the cross, he did overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil and sin. Uh, but that was not for us to confess him as Lord and then not make him Lord. Uh, what Jesus did on the cross was in order to give us victory over every sin. Jesus came to give us victory over sin. Now, uh, now we know we're, we're living in a time that's filled with darkness and evil and wickedness, uh, twisted, perverted, sick. I'm going to say people. Now, now I realize there's demonic powers everywhere, but how many notice it's getting more wicked and twisted and perverted? Matter of fact, the Bible says this. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. Um, the other day, I don't want to longitate this, but uh, I went out with the guest speakers, Randy and Joanna. We stopped at a restaurant, and we walked in, and we could tell the waitress was all upset. And we asked her what was going on. She said, well, we, just this morning alone, that was 1130, we've had two different groups of people begin to yell and scream at us. And, 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 and the people are losing it. I don't know. The, the world is becoming violent. Jesus said that violence will fill the earth as it was in the days of Noah. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 3, 1, this, know this also that in the last days perilous days will come for it begins to give us, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, uh, without natural affection, truce breakers. I mean, there's a list of morals. Now, we're talking about the morals of man. We're talking about morality here. Morality will take a nosedive. And actually, it says they were going to say evil is good and good is evil. Uh, in Mark 4:19, it says, "And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in will choke out the word." So we're talking about the sower soweth the word. We're talking about the word of God that is sown into the hearts of believers. So what I'm talking about when I'm dealing with sin, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the body, the bride, the church. Um, and people want us to think that, you know, sin is no longer an issue. But wait a minute. Why did, why did all the sufferings of humanity come? Why did the flood come? Why did Sodom and Gomorrah, why were they destroyed? Why, why is God going to burn up this earth with fire? Why? Because of sin. Because of sin. Uh, if you look in the book of Revelation, and really most of this is in the first three chapters, is talking to the church, and, and God said this, He that overcometh. He that overcometh, he that overcometh. Nine times, nine times. Overcomes what? Sin. Overcomes sin. Well, we've talked about sin before. I don't think people talk about sin enough. Sin is way more devastating. Uh, sin corrupted the very heavens. The Bible says the very heavens are filthy before God. How much more man that drinketh iniquity like its water. He said, yeah, but Pastor Mike, when I accepted all my sins, when I accepted Christ, all my sins were given past, present, and future. That's a lie. If that was the case, then why does the Bible talk so much about sin in the New Testament? I'm talking about in the epistles. I'm saying, why did John say if we confess our sins, if, if, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, it says, whosoever committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, listen, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil that was manifested in my flesh. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulations, wrath, stripes, additions, heresies, envyings, uh, uh, drunkenness, you know, on and on and on. Uh, anything that, what is sin? Anything that is against the will, the nature, the plan, the purpose of God. Now, these Thursday nights, I've been preaching some very serious messages. I need the Holy Ghost to help me tonight because people could think I'm involved in legalism. I'm not involved in legalism. 
I'm just embracing the truth of the Bible. Uh, last Sunday, not, last Thursday, I talked about true repentance, and I realized that many people I know, and I'm not judging their heart because the Bible says pull the beam out of your own eyes, but most people have not ever really truly repented. What do you mean not ever truly repented? Well, repent means that you acknowledge you're wrong and you, you renounce it, you renounce it, and you go in the other way. Now, of course, uh, sin takes us away from God, right? Sin takes away from God. What does repentance do? It causes us to run to God. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned mourning. Join the heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. He's talking to Christians there, not talking to sinners. We don't expect sinners to repent until they want to get born again. Now, now here's the truth, and we got to just look at this. A number of issues here. First of all, God is looking. See, God's not desperate. Say, God's not desperate. God's not desperate for people to follow him. God's not going to compromise. God's not going to lower the standards. God is looking for a people. A people who what? A people who worship him where? In spirit and in truth. God is looking for people who want him. Listen to this. This is salvation. God is looking for people who are hungry for him. They want him more than anything. Now, I'm not saying your flesh wants him. No. Your heart, your heart cries out, God, I need you. I got to have you. I want to follow you. I want to serve you. I want to obey you. True repentance is when you come to the place where you say, Lord, I really do not want anything in my life that is not of you. Whatever that means. I really don't want anything in my life that is not of you. I do not want it. And God set me free. Now, I'm going to show you how you can get victory over this. Uh, And and it's quite amazing what God gives to us. See, the weapons are warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, there is a straight and narrow way. Jesus told us this. He said, straight and narrow is the way that leaf to life and few there be which find it. Few there be which find it. So what do you mean find it? For in other words, there is within the heart uh, of, of a people, only God knows who. They really want the truth, even if it hurts, even if it, and there is no if. It's going to take you out of the darkness. He said, if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And then it says, if we confess our sins. Notice, if you're not walking in the light, you can confess you're the righteousness of God all you want. You've deceived yourself. You got to walk in the light. He, 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 when he came into the world, he said, uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil or they're self-centered. So, you know, that's just the natural pa- part of our flesh. Our flesh was corrupted. And, and so our flesh wants what it wants. Well, uh, Jesus came to give us the ability to mortify, to crucify, to nullify, to put to death the flesh. And that's why it says, if we be dead with him, if we be dead with him, we shall live with him. If we be dead. You know what? God's not a respecter of persons. This is for all of us. I've got to die. I've, got, now I've, I've died to a lot of stuff in my life. I know it's progressive because it's like the prodigal son who wakes up in the pig pen and he gets it in his heart. I'm going home. Let me ask you something. Have you got that in your heart yet? I don't know what it's going to cost me. I don't know what it's going to take. I'm coming home to Daddy God. I'm coming home to God who is holy and righteous and pure and blameless. Blameless. He's perfect. I'm coming home, Daddy. I don't want to live like this world. I don't want to talk like this world. I don't want to live like, act like this world. I don't want the flesh. I don't want the flesh. Now, here's the truth of the matter. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, I don't care if you're a famous preacher. You cannot have sin and God. You're just going to have to decide right now, those of you who are watching, you want this world, you're going to be like an Esau. Esau was supposed to be a pilgrim, a stranger, like his daddy, a nomad. But you know what? He settled down and he took the wives of local heathen women and they became what we call the Edomites. They became enemies of God. And yet he was the firstborn uh, uh, of Isaac. And he should have been the friend of God, but he decided he wanted the world. So if we want the world, the Bible says, if any man love the world, the love of the father's not him. 
He says, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. I'm not, listen, I didn't write these scriptures. And to be honest with you, I would have never wrote them. <laughs> but if you're a friend of the world, the Bible says you're an enemy of God. Now, the good thing is that enemies can become God's friends. Because it says that in Ephesians chapter 2, and, and, and it says, And you have the quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, the children of wrath. We were by nature. Aren't you glad you got a new nature? When you accepted Jesus Christ, now we can become partakers of the divine nature. But there is this battle now between the flesh and the spirit. It talks about in Galatians chapter 5. The spirit uh, wrestles against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that you cannot do the things that you would. Well, I'm going to show you how we can get victory over this flesh. But here's the thing. Do you want victory over the flesh? Do you want? Now, here's the thing. My heart, really, I'll tell you what. I've been under a heavy burden of prayer. I'm praying all the time. I'm crying out to God because there's got to be a great awakening in the church. People have got to finally wake up. And, and my daughter preached, and you could watch it online. She preached a tremendous message. She'll be preaching here uh, on a Sunday night in October. I think it's the 25th. She talked about the table of God and the table of devils. You cannot eat at both tables. And yet, yet. Because a lot of the false doctrine going on today, a lot of people think they can partake of Christ and partake of sin and still be good to go or hope they can repent right before they die. But that's pretty wicked. Think about the price that Christ paid to free us, the blood that he was shed. Are we going to be like the pigs that go back to the vomit or to the mud or the dogs that go back to the vomit? I don't want to be like that. I want to be holy. Matter of fact, he said, without holiness, no man will see God. I want to be holy as he is holy. I really do. How about you? And uh, so there's a straight and narrow way, but we can overcome sin. We can have freedom, and, but we've just got to be. Now, 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 how can we be free? First of all, there's what we call, uh, we used to say, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. I want you to know that's a lie. That's a lie. I've never met. Now, I'm not talking about being flaky here, but, but I'm going to show you tonight we got to be heavenly minded. Matter of fact, it tells us he that is earthly is earthly. We're not supposed to be earthly minded. And, 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 and I, I'm going to show you how we're going to overcome. Look here in Hebrews chapter 12 with me, if you will. Hebrews chapter 12. And Hebrews 11 is the faith hall of fame. And these are all people who have gone on before us. And that's why I call them the witnesses that have gone on before us. And uh, so notice what it says here. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That means other people have made it to the other side. We can make it if we want to. How many know that you can? Now, I'm gonna, now we know in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Now by the faith, hope, and love. Don't forget these because we're going to talk about them tonight. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our what? Now, I'm going to show you in the word of God is the key that will open the door for you to come out of living a sinful life. A life that's not pleasing to God. Remember, the father spoke over Jesus twice. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so notice what it says. We're first thing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, let us, let us, let us, let us, let us, let us. Notice it says everyone that nameth the name of Christ should depart from iniquity. Now we're not, we're not starting any kind of a spiritually correct group. We're not going around and looking in people's lives to make sure they're not living in sin. That's between you and God. Now, as a pastor, I have to deal with things at times. But if, if you, if you want to continue in your sin... God will let you, and God will let you go to hell, too. I said, God will let you go to hell. Um, hell is full of sinners, people who didn't want to come out of their sin. They did not want to come. They loved the world. They loved the world. You cannot love the world and love God. You can't. I'm going to show you this. It says, so a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, so there's things that, you know, maybe they're not sinful, but they're burdens. There are certain burdens God wants you to lay down. And the sin which does so easily beset us. 
and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, we're, we're on a race. This is a race. You are running that race the moment you accept Christ. Looking, what are we looking on to? We got our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, it says, above all, taking the shoe of faith, wherewith you shall be to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So we know we're, there's some practical things involved in overcoming sin, and one of them is faith in Christ. Uh, what's ever born of God overcometh the world, and this victory overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is. He's what? He's everything he says he is. He has accomplished everything he said he accomplished. He is doing everything he said he would do, and he is coming back again. So notice, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish our faith, listen to this now. Here is the, the, the golden key. Who for the joy get a hold of this, that was set before him, endured the cross, the joy that was set before him, the joy that was set before him, say that, the joy set before him. Now really, what we're talking about here is we're talking about heaven. Heaven. Jesus talked about heaven a lot in John 17. He was communicating to his father the very last prayer before he was betrayed and taken away. And he kept on talking about the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. He said, when I was with you. Matter of fact, he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also in John 16. He's talking about heaven. We don't talk about heaven enough. That's our great hope. I'm going to show you tonight what caused these people to overcome sin the world, the flesh, the devil, terrible sufferings, terrible afflictions, terrible problems was not promise of a nice, comfortable life in this earth. It was the promise of eternity. Look it up. Look up the word heaven, how many times it appears in the New Testament. And even sometimes it talks about the word glory, the glory, the glory. Heaven is called glory. I'm going to talk about the glory of God. On Sunday morning, I'm going to talk about how we, we follow after the glory of God. What do you mean we follow after the glory of God? Remember in the old covenant, there was a fire by night and a cloud by day, and for 40 years they followed that. Do you know who the glory of God is now? It's Jesus Christ. We follow after Jesus Christ. Wherever he leads, I will follow. And so heaven, heaven is the, 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 what you attach your, 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 your heart to, and it's what will drag you right through the portholes of eternity. Heaven. But if you lose sight of heaven, and I, I don't think we talk about, I, I've got to, and also you got to read, another thing that will push you is the reality of hell. I, I had an experience when I was 19 years old, and uh, this was one of my best-selling books, Horrors of Hell, Splendors of Heaven. And I had an angel take me to heaven, and God dropped me into hell. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I tell you what, heaven has been pulling at my heart for the last 46 years. And hell is pushing me away. I don't ever want to go back there again. I tell people, you ought to read my book on hell. Um, and, 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 and Jesus talked more about hell than anything else. But heaven is throughout the scriptures. Heaven, say heaven. He, 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 who, want, who wants to go there? But how many know you got to pay a price to get there? You ain't going to get to heaven. You ain't going to go into heaven like slipping on, a, on banana peelings. You got to determine in your heart, I want heaven. I want eternity with God. I, 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 want, I, want, to, I, want, I want to be, and I've been in the throne room one time. I want to be there again, but next time forever. I've already walked the Garden of Eden. It was just so amazing. You can't hardly believe it. I mean, heaven was so real to me that, 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 that when I came back, I can't even hardly describe it because it's beyond the understanding of my mind. Now, I didn't see the new Jerusalem or anything like that, but, but I experienced heaven. And it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, the joy of heaven that was set before him, did what endured the cross, despising the shame. He despised it. You know, it says the suffering the, of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in them that love him. Glory, say glory. glory. Heaven, eternity. 
You know, right now I see the church full of fear. It just don't make sense because if you truly believe you're right with God, if you're born again, if you really love God, then all they can do is send you to heaven. Heaven is real, people. You think this physical world is real? You ain't seen nothing yet. Heaven was created before the earth. Just read that in Genesis. Heaven right now is being populated. Heaven was empty except for angels until the, after the resurrection of Jesus. And then he led captivity captive. And, and every born again, God-loving, God-fearing person who dies now goes immediately to heaven. Now, you said, yeah, but I don't have a physical body yet. It don't matter. That spiritual body is just as real as your physical body. Because whether in the body, out of the body, I don't know. I don't really believe my physical body went to heaven. But to me, it was more real than my physical body. My sense of smell, my, my eyesight, my hearing, my, my awareness was way more than what it was in this dumb, dead, sick, perverted, twisted, dark world. Why in the world would you sell your inheritance of eternity for the dumb stuff of this world. What do you mean dumb stuff? Anything that is against the will of God. It's time for us to repent, truly. Stop fooling yourself. Repent. I think that's the, that's the message for the modern day church, repent. Repent for what? Repent for seeking and desiring and wanting anything that is against the divine nature, the plan, the will, the purposes of God. First of all, you understand the reason why the devil is doing that is because he doesn't really want you to know what life and life in abundance is. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it in abundance. You will not experience life in abundance without giving all that you have to Jesus. He said, eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have no life in you. Now, I'm not preaching angry. I'm warning. I'm telling people, wake up. Wake up right now because you don't know if you have tomorrow. You lay your head down on the pillow tonight and you could be gone in your sleep. Many, many, many people lay their heads down tonight. Many people, over 250,000 people, the last time I checked, slip off into eternity every day. And most of them are still in their sins. And matter of fact, Jesus said to the Jewish people, he said, unless you believe on me, you will die in your sins. If you die in your sins, you're a goner. And you're, and you're never going to get out of that place where it's, it's forever darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. And your heart would be filled with forever regret to think you messed, you messed your opportunity for a stupid bowl of porridge like Esau. It says, listen to this. It says, looking unto Jesus, author of our finish our faith, before the joy of the set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down where? Set down where? At the right hand of the what? There's heaven, people. Why did Jesus not commit sin? Well, uh, it's because he had faith. It's because he loved his father. Now, I'm not going to deny those things. It's because he hid the word of God in his heart. I'm not. But you know what? Right here, it gives the credit to him overcoming every test, temptation, because of his eyes were in heaven. He was looking for heaven. Paul said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ. Paul the Apostle, I have a desire and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, it's more needful for me to remain here with you. But the time came in 2 Timothy when they knew they were going to take his life. And he said, my, the, time, the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I've kept the faith. I, I, I fought a good fight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You all want that crown of righteousness? I can't wait. Heaven can't wait. We see that song. I, I can't wait, heaven, I, I need heaven. But I, why are you hanging around? You know, back some years ago when I got hit in about 2005 with colon cancer, I could have easily died, easily. I wasn't afraid to die, but I refused to die. Why? Because I knew God wasn't done with me yet. That's the only reason I'm hanging around. Because I know that. Now, the moment God tells me, I'm done, I'm done with you, I, I, I'll be gone. I'll just step out of this old body of mine. And I'm going to be out of this place. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go back to heaven where I've been before. And right now, uh, they're, they're, they're celebrating. Uh, they're, they're having an amazing, awesome time in heaven. And, and it will never end. It will a Holy Ghost party. And a Holy Ghost party never stops. 
And they're having the time of their eternity, not time of life, but a time of eternity. Listen to what he says here. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you become wearied and faint where? In your minds. Listen, you have not yet resisted on the blood, striving against sin. Now, it goes on and it's going to tell us how God's going to reprove you. He's going to rebuke you. He's going to correct you. He's going to chastise you because he loves you. Do not reject the chastisement. This message is even a form of God chastising you. It is a form of God's discipline. You know, Paul said, warning every man that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul said to the church, for the space of three years, I cease not to warn you with tears. With tears. Where, where is the tears in the preachers today? It's just all hoopla. You know? And we're going to get into this in much greater detail. Look there in Colossians. I'm telling you that the way to overcome sin is to have this, this future look. Look into the future. Um, look into what God is doing. Um, I believe it's what made Jesus victorious over sin. By faith. He saw heaven. By faith, I see heaven. How many see heaven by faith? I mean, not, well, I don't know what heaven looks like. Well, just know this. He said, just read the book of Revelation. Now, now get up there maybe to chapter 21. <laughs> get beyond all of the, the, the horses and the seals and the trumpets. But it's still glorious. You know, everybody talks about, oh, the Antichrist. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Not when God begins to pour out his wrath, his anger, and his judgment. And you know what it says they refuse to do? They refuse to repent. How many Christians will hear this message and still not change their prayer to a sincere, God, not my will. Not my will. And then they harden their hearts. And the Bible says in Hebrews, take heed lest you harden your heart so hard to where the time comes you can't repent. You cannot repent. You harden your heart because you wanted to do what your flesh wanted. The flesh has been corrupted. It's been contaminated. Don't tell me there's not a sin problem. The reason why God's glory, God's power, God's healing, God's manifested presence has not been in our church services is because there's still sin in the camp. There's sin in the camp. How about a new pastor, Michael? Uh, as far as I know, I'm living uh, holy and right and I'm pressing in. But I do know this. As I draw closer to God, he draws close to me. And he's going to reveal to me areas of my life that I need to change in. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. There's areas I need. Now, the good news is I can finally say that the sin which was so... The weight and the sin which so easily was besetting me, I have laid it aside. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have. I have. And one thing that's helped me lay it aside is this. This is not my home. This is not my world. I'm not pouring my life into this stuff. Hey, don't misunderstand me. I thank God for his mercy that for years, many times, I just got wrapped up in stuff. Got caught up. It really is called idolatry and covetousness. Some of the most covetous and idolatry-filled people in the world is Americans. Because they don't have their stuff, the stuff has them. I'm not picking on anybody. You know, it's just the way it is. Listen, Colossians 1, 5. For the hope, listen, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. That, that's how they approached the early church. They approached them with this aspect of heaven. It was a carrot before the horse, you might say. Heaven. That's what we're promising you. That's what Jesus said. Even the very last thing he said to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. See, they wanted to rule and reign in this earth. Remember that? That's what they, they said, Jesus, when are you going to set up your kingdom? He said, you don't understand. This, this world is not my kingdom. Uh, you're earthly, so your mind is on earthly things. Did you get that? You're earthly, so your mind is on earthly things. He said, but he that is from heaven speaketh the things of heaven. We're leaving this earth. My eyes are on heaven. Now I'm going to do as much as I can for Jesus. You know, if I'm around for another 15, 20, 30 years, I don't know. I hope it's not 30 years. 
but however long I've left, I'm going to do everything I can to find people who want God. They're hungry for God. They're not finding, they're not trying to find a way to slip into heaven and live like they want. You know, it's just like marriage. I, I, I didn't want a wife that would be going out and cheating on me. I wanted a wife that would be committed and devoted and faithful and sold out to me. Doesn't that make sense? Don't you think God, don't you think Jesus deserves that kind of bride? Will you be one of them? Will you be a bride that is in love with him head over heels? Will you be completely committed to him? Will you be sold out to him? Will you finally just let go? Just let go. If we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. If we deny him, he'll deny us. If we don't believe this, he cannot, it, it, it don't matter to God, he can't deny himself. If we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He can't, he can't deny himself. I know this is true. I know heaven is real. I know hell is real. I know I'm just passing through this land. Listen to this in 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh, Jesus, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world. Listen, received up into glory. Remember on the mount when he ascended? Remember that the very last thing Jesus does, he wants them to see him going where? Heaven. And the angels show up and said, well, what are you guys doing? He'll come back in like manner. But notice, he want that, what an impression on the mind of those 140 people. Whoa, there he goes. Where is he going, Bob? I don't know. Where is he? He's going to heaven. He's prepared a place for us. Oh, you mean he isn't going to rule and reign in this earth? Right now, he will a thousand years. No, no. People right now in the church, they want to take over the government. I understand. I like righteousness to rule and reign. But the Bible says the time will come when righteousness will rule and reign on this earth. But it rules and reigns in heaven right now. It's there right now, people. If, you're high, if, you, if you love God, if you serve God, if you have repented of your sins sincerely, and if your heart would stop beating right now, you would slip up out of your body and you'd be looking at us. How do you know that? Because I experienced that. Back in 1981, I got extremely sick. I was passing a church. Got up in the morning. I mean, I was sick. I was sick. I was sick. I could hardly move. I dragged myself out of the bed. I climbed up the mountain right behind. I could show you where it was at. And I just was crying out to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I bear, Finally, I was up there all day just praying, just running a very, very, very high fever. Don't know what was going on. I came down. I got into the house, the parsonage, and I, I crawled my way to the bathroom. Now, when I got to the bathroom, just telling you what you did, I was running such a high fever, I kept my underwear on, but I stripped my clothes. It was summertime. We didn't have air conditioning. And I laid my body as flat as I could on the linoleum to try to get the cool, coolness. Next thing I know, I felt myself dying. I cried out to Kathy. She comes running. She rolls me over and puts my head in her lap. I left my body. Boom. It's as real as what I am right now, but no longer am I my body. I'm looking down at my body. I'm looking, and I don't know if Kathy called me back into my body or not. I'm just looking down at Kathy, and she's got my body in her arms, cradled. And the next thing you know, it's like somebody turned on a vacuum cleaner, and I was sucked back into my physical body. Listen to this. And the sickness was completely gone as if it never was. But I know what it is. I was out of my body. Now, the good news is I was headed towards heaven. I wasn't headed towards hell. But when a human being dies not loving Christ, their soul descends to hell. And they will never get out, people. That's why we preach this gospel. It says that he believed on in the world and received up in the glory. Um, so I want you to look there in Colossians Chapter 3 with me just for a moment. We're going to get ready to close. But look there in Colossians chapter 3 and begin here in verse 1 with me. L listen to what it says here. Um, it says, if we then be risen with Christ. If we then be, well, you can't be risen with him if you're not dead first. 
What are we dying to, Pastor Mike? We're dying to anything that is against the will of God in our lives. Anything. Say anything. Everything. And it's not just sin. It's the way. It's anything that's going to distract you from fulfilling the will of God. You know, that's why when I got born again, before I got born again, I was into hunting and fishing and, and, and trap lines and this and that and sports. And when I got, I'm saying me, when, the moment I got born again, I literally died to all of that. I did. Now, I worked as a fisherman in Alaska, but it was a job. But I, I, I you know, I died to it all. I'm not saying you can't go hunting and fishing and not go to heaven. Yeah, because some, actually a lot of people have got to do that if they're going to survive. Uh, I'm not saying a brother can't go out here and play golf. I just don't have time for it. But you know what? You think about stupid stuff that you know in your heart is against the will of God. Stupid stuff. And today with technology, wow. What's going to rescue us, heaven? Heaven's going to rescue you. Just study the subject of heaven. That's where all the early saints were looking for. Listen, if ye then be with Christ, seek those things which are above. Above, above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Listen, set your affections on things above. What is that, heaven? Set your heart on things above, heaven. Heaven, by faith, by faith, see heaven. See yourself there. See yourself walking the streets of gold. See yourself drinking from the fountain of living waters. See yourself eating from the tree of life. See yourself standing before the throne of God. Feed your imagination. Nothing wrong with that. Imagine. If I could only imagine. I think they wrote a song. If I could only imagine. Heaven. Heaven. Can't wait. Filled with glory and grace. I just can't wait. Set your affections where? On things, your affections. That doesn't mean you don't deal with life, but your affections, your heart. Yes, you're here, but your heart is in heaven. I'll give an example. Many times when I went and did missionary work, I didn't want to do missionary. I never wanted to leave my wife and my kids at home. I love them. But God would send me. And guess what? All that time I was in the Philippines, all that time I was in Great Britain, I was in, in South America. Guess where I was at? Paul said, he said, I may be absent in my flesh, but my spirit is with you. My heart was with them. All I could do, I couldn't hardly wait to get back home because they're, lo- they're the love of my natural life. Well, let heaven become your love. Can't wait. Can't wait to get there. Now, I, I'm not going yet. Say, I'm not going yet. Don't you fall over dead on me tonight. But say, man, my, 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 my perspective is heaven. See, I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to go a little bit longer than normal. Is that okay? For those of you who are hungry, those of you are hungry, we are preaching such a materialistical doctrine in America that it is robbing people of the very thing that will set them free from this world. What is that? Heaven. Heaven will set you free. Love, faith, and hope. 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 Now, how many of you ever read uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin? Any of you ever read it? You ought to read it. It's a powerful book. It was written by a pastor's daughter. And uh, it actually brought about the, the Civil War. Um, but, but there was an Uncle Tom who was raised in a home. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Africans in those days, and we're talking about not that from generation to generation, were in the same family. And they were like family. They were like family. And, of course, when the war happened, uh, North came and separated the families. I think if those people wanted to stay together as a family, they should have. But there was one family where they all were very much interconnected. And Uncle Tom was, he raised the little boy because daddy was busy doing business, his daddy. So he raised the kids of this, this his master, we'll say. Well, he got into trouble with gambling and they were going to take everything, his plantation. And he didn't want to do it. And he sold Uncle Tom. He sold him. Of course, his wife, his kids, everybody was weeping, his little boy just weeping, weeping. Well, his little boy went on and for years looking for Uncle, Uncle Tom. 
Where's Uncle Tom? Uncle Tom. Well, he got, he got hired from, he was, he was sold from this guy to this guy. He ended up really in a very bad situation where actually the, 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 the master was white, but the, 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 the ones who kept the slaves in line were blacks. And they would just beat the people. And because Uncle Tom was a very dedicated, on fire man of God, just a preacher, uh, these that black uh, uh, people, these African Americans or Africans that were over him, they would just beat him and beat him and beat him. And finally, Uncle Tom, uh, the boy, found where Uncle Tom was, and 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 he said, "I want, I, I'll buy him back, I'll buy him back." And they laughed at him. You have to read the end of the book, and you can get over all this. He goes in there, and Uncle Tom is laying in the dung in the garbage in a heap, and he grabs little. He, this, this boy now, who's now probably 20 years old, grabs Uncle Tom, weeping, Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom. And Uncle Tom got a big old smile on his face. He said, it's okay. I can't remember the kid's name. It's okay. He said, what do you mean? He said, I see heaven. He said, I, I see my master Jesus. He said, I see God. He said, it's okay. It's okay. Don't weep for me. Don't cry for me. He said, my suffering and my agony and my pain is all over with. And away he went. <laughs> away he went away he went um, and then uh, as you read on here he says for we are dead it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affections on things above not on things on the earth for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God now listen this is the promise to those who are dead say those who are dead when Christ, who is our life, is he your life? Will you grab that tonight? If he's not your life tonight, dear saint, dear brother, dear sister who confesses to know God, please make Jesus your life. Please make him your rhythm, your rhyme, your purpose, your function. Please, please. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in where? Glory! Say glory. glory! What's glory? It's heaven. Then you shall appear with him in heaven. Um, Paul said in Philippians 3.18, I'm going to try to get through this real quick. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, weeping, weeping. For many, many who confess to know Christ, I tell you this even weeping, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. What's the cross? Die to self. They're enemies to dying to self. They don't want to die to self. They don't want to die to their passions and their desires. Listen, there's been many times in my walk with God, I was in that tug of war between the flesh and the spirit, that like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down, up and down, and just, and I've gone two times, and I thought I was really crucified with Christ, and then I found out I wasn't. I'll tell you, I have come into a time of my life where I am crucified to my flesh. I can't explain to you the freedom I'm experiencing, <laughs> the joy I'm having. I am free. Now, I've got to keep that flesh in the tomb. <laughs> I've got to keep buried because that old flesh, man, it's like weeds. It wants to pop back up. How are you going to do that? Heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. The day will come when I will leave my wife, my children, my grandchildren, this place, people I know. But you know what? It'll be okay because I'll be with God forever. You know why? Because I'm doing what Paul said. Hey, listen, for many walk of whom I told you often, and I'll tell you weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Their mind is on earthly things. But isn't that where a lot of preachers are taking people? Preachers can only take you where you live. So let's talk to this preacher. What's important to your preacher? That uh, $30,000 Rolex watch? That $5,000 diamond ring? That expensive car? That yacht? That elaborate mansion? Now, I'm not picking on these guys. But I tell you what, I don't want to go there. Jesus had nowhere to lay his head but on a rock. For our conversation, listen to this. Paul said this, for our conversation is in heaven. Let's talk about heaven. Do we ever talk about heaven? Can't wait. Going to see Jesus, can't wait. 
for our conversation is heaven. When's the last time you heard a sermon about heaven? My, oh my. Well, you hear people who say they've gone there. I'm not talking about people who've gone there. When is the last time you've ever heard somebody tell you that heaven is the very, the, the thought of heaven, the desire of heaven, the longing of heaven is the very thing that sets you free from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the cares of this world. Materialism, it sets you free, heaven. Why? Because you're just passing through. It says, from whence also we look for the Lord, the Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Jesus Christ. Esau, he, he, he built a house. He stayed in one place. Jacob never did. Jacob became a, a pilgrim like his father Abraham, and I mean his grandfather Abraham and Isaac. Remember, Lot's wife looked back. She got her eyes and she became a pillar of salt. She was destroyed. Uh, let me read these scriptures and then Hebrews 11, and listen to this because we're not talking about the faith of Abraham. Uh, and this will make you free. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. He was living in a house. He had a permanent house. But when God called him, he came out of his house. Now, Pastor, what if God calls you out of your house? I'm fine with it. I, I, I've been homeless at times. I've lived in a car. I've lived in the back of a pickup truck. We even slept in a bathtub in Germany, my wife and I. When we got married, we were homeless. I'm okay with it. We just got our house back three years ago. That's fine. God blessed us with it. But it don't have me. It, it don't have me. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. Didn't know where he was going. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded them, and embraced them, and confessed. Listen, this is what they confessed. Now listen, this is where you'll find out where your heart's at. They were confessing that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I'm just passing through. I'm a stranger. I'm a pilgrim. I'm a nomad. I'm just passing through. This world has no claim on me. This world, Jesus said, the prince of this world comes and he can find nothing in me. Remember, the prince of this, the, the devil offered Jesus all the wealth of the world if he bowed down. Jesus didn't even wink. He said, it, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. It is written, man shall live by bread alone, not by bread alone, but by every word. For they that, listen to this, and they, they confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country whose builder and maker is God. We need to start confessing. I, I'm just a stranger and a pilgrim. Well, you need to buy this new car. Well, if God wants me to, but you know what? I don't really care. I'm just a stranger and a pilgrim. You got to have this, you got to have that. No, I don't. I don't have to have nothing, thank you. That's why they hated the early church. You know why? Because the early church got a glimpse of heaven and they could not be manipulated and controlled by the people of the earth. Well, they turned off my credit because I was going to buy this. Well, good. Say good. Good. They turned on your credit. You don't have to have more of a burden on your back. Right now, I'm striving. We got the church out of debt. We still got the parsonage. And I'm striving to get completely out of debt. I do not even have a credit card anymore. My son Michael does. He lets me use it, but I pay him cash. You know? But I'm not against that. I'm just saying I don't want the stuff of this world. Matter of fact, if you'll back up to the gym, I'll load you up with a bunch of stuff. It's full. I don't know how it got here. I know some of it came from Victoria's and some came from this and that. And Did we get any of your stuff, Elizabeth? I hope not. Okay, good. Don't. Don't give us none of your stuff. Listen, 1 Peter 1, 17. And if you call on the Father who without respect to persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Your sojourning. See, that's the early church. They were sojourners. They were nomads. They were pilgrims and strangers. They wouldn't let the world get a hold of them. 
Uh, 1 Peter 2.11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. How many ever heard of John Bunyan? Any of you? Oh, man, look him up. Pilgrim's Progress, please, find it. Jim Pappas, a friend of mine, he modernized it. You can download it uh, uh, on audio.com or something. Just look it up, Pilgrim's Progress. Listen, it's about a man who's a sinner living in the city of destruction. It's all like, it's a parable. And one day he comes across some scriptures and he wakes up and he says, listen, we're living in a city of destruction. And he said, we got to get out of here. He tries to convince his wife and his children. Everybody thinks he's lost his mind, but he goes on his journey. And he goes through all kinds of tests, all kinds of trials, all kinds of problems. My kids were raised with this. I mean, I raised him with this over and over. Every time we'd go somewhere. I don't know how many times. And in Christianity, is even the second book, which is even better. And guess what he was looking for in the whole two books? Guess what they were looking for? The Celestial City. It just hit me today. What got John Bunyan and faithful, and, and not John Bunyan, Christian, and the other characters of this story? Guess what they were looking for? The Celestial City. The celestial city, the celestial city, everything. And when they would go astray, they'd think about the celestial city. And that's what got them to the celestial city. You know what's going to get you to heaven? You're thinking about heaven. Your heart is in heaven. Your mind is in heaven. Your emotions are in heaven. Listen to this. Wow. Wow. Well, in, in, in Romans 2, 7, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. What we? Heaven. We're seeking heaven. It says, receive with meekness and grafted word which is able to save our souls. Why, well, God, I pray to prayer. I'm born again. Well, hold on. Are you dead with Christ? Dead what? Stuff. What your flesh wants. Are you dead to a chat? It's glorious liberty. When you finally die, I, I mean, I, I have wept and cried and prayed almost every day. I get alone with God, and, and I said, Lord, I, all I want is you. All I need is you. All I got to have is you. I, I, I don't have no other alternative motives. What about this church, Pastor Mike, as God leads? I'm not looking for big numbers. I'm not looking, you know, the same that many times we just talked to uh, the, uh, Randy and Joanna, Revival hit Florida. Next thing you know, it was all about raising money, raising money, getting millions. Get, I'm not about money. I'm not going after the money. I'm not going after a yacht or an airplane or expensive rings. I'm going after Jesus. That's where I'm going. Listen to this. Jesus said, Jesus said, Matthew six nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Well, Jesus said this. Well, it's, it's strange. You wouldn't think believers believe this, do they? Preachers? Lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Heaven, when you get there, is there going to be anything waiting for you? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor uh, neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your be heart be also. You know, some people's treasure is in their phone. It's in their computer. It's wherever you spend your time. It's, it's in your boat. It's in your, I don't know, your vacation home. It's my, you know, I love my kids, but they're not my treasure. I, I'm laying up a treasure in heaven. Help me, Jesus. I'm laying up my treasures in heaven. Uh, it is, I wrote this, and I only got a couple more. It is very difficult for, for a person who has much wealth in this world to make it to heaven. Jesus said that, remember? People who got a lot of materialism, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get to heaven because his mind is on stuff. I heard a true story. This guy had an aunt. He was managing her stock. She's on a bed of death in the hospital dying. He goes in, and he's talking to his aunt, and she brings up the stock. Are you, did you sell this? Did you buy this? Did you? He said, Auntie, you're, 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 you're breathing your last breath. 
And all you're worried about is your money in the stock? Now, is that not insanity? But is not most believers who are covetous insane? They're insane. You're not going to take it with you. I'm sorry to say I've done quite a number of funerals where people just died instantly. A lot of my friends I used to run with. One guy, Greg, he ran his, he fell asleep coming home late at night. He ran his uh, car up an embankment, and there was a big oak tree, and the branch was sticking out, and he took off the top of his car, and we had a closed casket with him. Gary and Scott Kukowski, they didn't know Jesus, driving their, 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 their car across the frozen lake, which we always did in Wisconsin, hit a spring, and they found them both drowned at the bottom of it. A guy who rescued me when I was 12 years old, Claire Flintrop, I was drowning in my own puke. We drank vodka. They found him dead, drowned in his own vodka, in his own, in his own vomit, not vodka. Gone. Boom. Just gone. How many people are dying right now because of the covid and the vaccination, gone. So it is very difficult for a person who has much wealth in his world to make it to heaven. His mind is not in heaven, but on the pleasures of this life. The things they possess end up possessing them. Instead of seeking God, their life is filled with trying to please their flesh. Do we really believe what Jesus said? Now, here, here is the early church. When they finally got the gospel, Acts 2, 4, 4, and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Get the weight off. Get the weight off. Don't get more burdens. Um, Acts 4.33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Listen, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold. And listen to this. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. Now let me tell you about these apostles. They were dead. When that wealth was laid at their feet, they didn't touch it. They used it. For God's glory. I don't really know if we could do that today. I don't know how many preachers could you lay at their feet millions of dollars. And they don't start living high in the hog. I'm telling you by God's grace right now. I'm not doing it. I mean one time I I, I literally. God told me to buy a house. Pay 10,000. Invested another 10,000. A local businessman came to me. A Christian said I want to buy that house. And this was back probably 20 years ago, maybe longer. It was more than 20 years ago. And I, I, and I said, uh, let me pray about it. I came back. My wife agreed. Okay, we'll sell that house. He said, what do you want for it? I said, well, I've got 20-some thousand invested. I want 52,000. Now, he knew, but he knew it was worth it more than that. He knew it. And he's a friend of mine. And as a matter of fact, it's Greg Imes. Some of you know Greg. Uh, but anyways, uh, and, 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 and so he said, yeah, I'll give you 50 some thousand. And I only had the house for two months. That was a lot. That was a big profit in just two months, $30,000. And uh, so I, and I'm coming home from his business. And, 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 I'm, and, and the Lord speaks to me. He says, son, what are you going to do with that money? I said, God, you know that ain't my money. That's not my money. It's yours. I said, tell me what to do. He said, I want you to put it back into the kingdom. I said, yes, sir. So I went to Greg. I said, Greg, go ahead and give me that 20-some thousand. I'll pay all my bills and, buff, and take the rest and, and, and give it to our church. And we'll use it for the gospel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking some, but I've, I've gotten caught up. I've gotten caught up. How I many you know it's, you get your eyes off of heaven, you forget where you're going. And uh, so listen. It says they laid up at the feet of, of, of the apostles and distri- this, uh, distribution was made unto every mon- m- man according as he had need. What's going what's gonna to deliver you, my brother and sister, from this sin and the weight that has so easily got a hold of you? Begin to study heaven. Begin to think about eternity. To think of, the Bible says we're like the grass. We're here and we're gone. We're like a flower. No, some of us, 
you know, we're in our mid-60s, late-60s, early-70s. How much time do we have left on this earth? Come on. A lot of people I've visited through the years end up in nursing homes, and they were wealthy people at one time. Now they have nothing. Nothing, nothing. You know people like that. Why in the world pour your life into this world when you ought to be storing up for yourself treasures in heaven? Let, let heaven rescue your soul from hell. What? Let heaven rescue you. Look to heaven and see, I don't know about you, but I want to spend forever with you people in heaven. You hear me? I want to get there. It'll be so disappointing if I get there and I'm at the train depot and I hear that one of you died. One of my family members died and I'm waiting at the train depot and they never come because they loved this present evil world more than they loved God. Father, I pray now that you would take this truth and you would set people free from the materialism of this world, that heaven would rescue them in Jesus' name.